Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Under the Microscope, Under the Microscope uh, sessions on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Steve McFarl. I'm the director of OET Online. Good to see lots of people already coming in. So we're streaming on YouTube. Oh, just a moment. Under the microscope. Under the microscope. Let me just uh, mute sessions that. on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Steve McFarl. I'm the director of OET Online. Good to see lots of people already. Which channel is doing in. that? So Let's try that. The streaming on. All right, that should be all good now. Managed to fix that bit of noise there. And let me just bring up one more channel, everyone. Make sure we got all channels open. And give me a pipe in CC if you can hear me crystal clear, everyone. Can you hear me crystal clear? Just type in CC if you can. I'll just bring up um, OET Center Facebook page as well. So that we're able, so I can see your chats coming in. All right, I'm getting some CCs there. Excellent. So everyone, I'm in Brisbane. Uh, it's on the east coast of Australia. So just tell me where you are and what your profession is. That's what you can tell me. Let's begin with that. Hello from New Zealand. Hello to Nesta. What else have we got? Hello in Turkey. Welcome to India and Vietnam. Wonderful to see you. Hello there in Ethiopia we have, and Pakistan is here. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, we have Nigeria and India and Egypt, Qatar, Zambia, Ghana. Isn't it amazing? Saudi, so many places. We've got nurses here. Uh, we've got a vet over there in Italy. Um, hello to Poland. So many places. Wonderful, everyone. All right. Well, look, it's going to be, this is our under the microscope. Under the, can't pronounce that word today, everyone. It's our under the microscope session, everyone. So we're going to get started because we've got a bit to cover. And I'm going to try to take about 30 minutes of your time today. I know you're all busy people. So let's see if this works for you and get your writing on track a little bit. But I can see Myanmar is here, formerly known as Burma. Hello to South Africa and Bangladesh as well. Okay, let's get started, everyone. Just share my screen. Got a few channels to play with here. So what we're going to do today is um, it's paraphrasing the case notes. I'm going to do a particular um, paraphrasing technique, everyone. Oh, that's the wrong page. Let's try that one. We're going to do a particular technique, which I call nominalization, because that's a way of developing a formal writing style, which is very important because Obviously, you want to sound like a health professional, don't you? You're going to be writing to other professionals. You do need to sound like a professional in the workplace. And again, that's the beauty of OET. It is preparing you for the workplace, for the medical workplace. It's a workplace English test. That's why I love it. I'm sure that's why many of you love it as well. So let's get cracking, everyone. Um, but if you want to know where I am, where I'm from, that's our website there, oetonline.net.au. You can find out more about us on that page. All right, so let's get on to our subject of the day, everyone. 
And I'll just talk about this screen here. So what is nominalization? Well, it's turning verbs and adjectives and even adverbs into nouns. And by doing that, you're demonstrating um, a good breadth of vocabulary, but it also helps you create a formal and professional writing style. Very important. Let's have a little look at an example, everyone. So we've got this sentence. We analyzed the data from the experiment and it revealed that children react when they have too much sugar. Okay, that's a perfectly clear sentence, um, but it's not really, um, it does sound a little bit more like spoken English. Um, if we were going to write a report on that, we would write it more like this. The analysis of the data revealed children's reaction to excessive sugar intake. Now that sounds much more professional. That's the way that you write. And that's exactly what medical referrals are like. Um, they're referral letters, yes, but letters per se, but actually they're a little bit a blend of that letter, but quite a bit of that report genre, because you are providing a report on a patient's progress over a period of time. So it does bring in that report formality um, into its structure. And you can see what's happened. The verb analyze has become the noun analysis. Another verb react has become reaction. And then the slightly informal expression, too much sugar. Now, that's what you tell the parents, your child's having too much sugar, has um, uh, switched into, has gone up the register um, one or two degrees, and now it's a formal register with the excessive sugar intake. So that's what you need to do with your writing. You need to be able to write in that formal way. And if you do that, it's going to lead to greater clarity and conciseness um, because it's going to formalise your writing. You're going to sound quite objective, which you need to, um, and professional by removing the actor, the, the we, or the you, or the patient, if that's not the main focus, from the sentence. So it's a powerful technique. I'll give you another example here. The medical team decided to stop the treatment. Now we can say the medical team decided, but if we want to remove the medical team, and we're not interested in who decided, we're more interested in what was decided, then we can say a decision was made to stop the treatment. That creates a degree of um, anonymity because you're not mentioning who, you're just mentioning what, which is quite often what you want to focus on. The second example, we discussed whether it would be beneficial to see a specialist. You and the patient discussed it, right? But if you want to focus on the discussion, you can write, a discussion was held regarding the benefits of seeing a specialist. It's a different structure, all right? But now we know the focus of the discussion, all right? So that's what nominalization is. Um, I think it's very important that you develop this technique when you're writing. And if you can get your head around the concept and start doing it with your own case notes, you will find that your the sophistication um, the objectivity, the professionalism of your writing will definitely increase. Okay, so we're going to go and do some examples. Now I'm going to get you involved, everyone. I want you guys active in the chat box. So I'm just going to set myself up here so I can see your chats as they come along. Just one moment. All right, I think I've got that set up how I want it, everyone. Okay, so now I've got some sentences on the left. And what I want you to do is come up with a formal expression for these words. So I'm going to read through the notes. Imagine these as the case notes. And what I want you to do is think about a formal expression that you could use. 
for some of these words, right? So if, a, if there's no fever, no cough, no runny nose, how would you describe that medically as a health professional? What word would you use? You can do that in one word. Same, no fever, no temperature. What's the medical word for that? Symptoms suggest acute colonic pseudo obstruction. Now we've got the word suggest. Uh, do you know what the adjective is of that word suggest? The next one, the subjective, 226, sensitive to hot and cold, not too serious. Can you tell me what the noun for sensitive is? All right. And not too serious. Have you got a more formal word? What's another word we could use to paraphrase this expression? Continuing on, uh, this patient on for 226 was permanently restored. Do you know what a word would be for uh, permanently is an adverb? What's the adjective? Restored is a verb. Can we turn that verb into a noun? What's the noun of restored? Mr. Z complained of osteoarthritis in both knees for many years. Both knees, everyone, and for many years. How would you describe that as a health professional? Sleep disturbed, last three nights, woke up with pain. Right, we're looking for synonyms here. Disturbed, we need a noun. Um, pain, is there another word for pain, a synonym you could use? All right, I've given you lots of examples, everyone. So now I'm going to check. I can see answers coming in. Yep, a lot of people are going for the first one, asymptomatic. Well done, everyone. No fever, no cough, no runny nose, asymptomatic. And if we put that into a sentence, Mrs. X was asymptomatic. Sounds a lot better than saying Mrs. X did not have a fever, did not have a cough, and there was no evidence of a runny nose. It can be short and sweet. No fever, no temperature. I can see people writing in uh, some different answers here. I can see Kathy's written a febrile without respiratory symptoms. Nice. Uh, quite a few people, Nethu's also written a febrile. That's why you're doing OET. You can use your technical jargon. Mrs. X was a febrile. Short and sweet there. But that would normally be part of a longer sentence. Okay, what about suggest? Did anyone come up with a word for suggest? I'm looking in the chat box to see if anyone could come up with an adjective. Dora's got suggestion, yes, but... Uh, Dora's also done better. Symptoms were suggestive of an acute colonic pseudo obstruction. Beautifully written there, Dora. So we've come up with this. The symptoms were suggestive of an acute colonic pseudo obstruction. All of a sudden, we're developing a formal writing style. What about sensitive? Did anyone come up with a the noun of sensitive. The noun of sensitive. I'm looking to see what people have written in the chat. Sensitive, tooth 26, sensitive to hot and cold. What's the noun of this word? Yes, San got it. Sensitivity. Well done. So we've got sensitivity. What about not too serious? It's not too serious. It's like a one plus, not too serious. It's not severe. It's not too serious. What word could we use? You'll know the word when you see it. It's like a one plus. Um, we're going to use the word here. I'll bring it up, everyone. Yes, thank you, Lily Mole. It's a mild. So once we have these two words, look what we can do. The patient reported a mild, and now we've got hot and cold, a mild temperature sensitivity. Suddenly it's very formal. 
And I like the use of the word reported. It should be one of your go-to words because it's you're often writing about what the patients say. So the patient reported a mild temperature sensitivity. All right. And the next one I'll do for you. So we've got permanent and permanently and restored. This one is, do we have any dentists in the audience? This is what a dentist would write, permanent restoration. And we've got permanent restoration of tooth 26 was completed on 12th of May, 2022. So again, we're paraphrasing the case notes, writing it in a formal style. And that's really, if you think about OET, that's what you're asked to do, expand on the case notes. So we're just breaking this down. The more vocabulary you have, the easier it is. Mr. Z complained of osteoarthritis in both knees. Now I saw some people write the word bilateral, and that's the exact word you want. Bilateral, Alexia wrote. Excellent, Alexia. So that is the word you want. Um, but what about for many years? For many years, it's ongoing, isn't it? For many, many years. I'll show you everyone. A history of chronic bilateral osteoarthritis. Had patient complained of osteoarthritis in both knees for many years. So my question is, can you write like that? Can you put together those words and say, okay, for many years, therefore it's chronic, both knees, therefore it's bilateral, put it all together, a history of chronic bilateral osteoarthritis. It's not that hard. In fact, some would say it's easier than writing in a less formal way. In, in that sense that your health professionals, this is quite achievable. And we just use complained of, we could use reported. Mr. Z complained of, what did he complain of? A history of chronic bilateral osteoarthritis. That's what he complained of. And you are done. Just put that little article there. All right. Um, Dora wrote, Mr. Z reported a long history of. Nice, Dora. Yeah, lots of options there. Um, but you can imagine if you start writing like this, the OET assessors, or even in your future workplace, they'll look at the writing and, well, yep, that's professionally written. It will certainly put you in a um, good steed for the exam. Right, sleep disturbed last three nights, woke up with pain. So we need this disturbed as an adjective, but we really want a noun there, everyone. And is there another word for pain? And we've got insomnia, that's a good word. Yeah, for ages, writes Jennifer, but that's it's a bit informal. So we need something a little bit more formal for that. Um, and I'll show you this one, everyone. Um, but I'm going to use disturbances. That's a hard one. And for pain, I'm going to use a word discomfort just for a synonym, right? So I've changed to disturbances and discomfort. And look at this word. This is an important one. Last three nights. Mrs. Y has a recent history of, well, that went a bit funny. Mrs. Y has a recent history of, of what? Sleep disturbances and discomfort. There you go, everyone. Now, let me ask you all a question. What do you think? Can you write like this? How hard is it on a scale of one to 10? How hard is it for you to write formally? One, um, easy, easy as. 10, oh my goodness, it's extremely difficult. All right. So think about that. Now, Dan Danny says, is paraphrasing case notes a part of the writing section? I'm new to learning about OET. Yes, it is, because you are given notes, right? That's the key point. You're given notes. 
And so you've got to expand on those notes, but you need to do it in a formal manner. So this is OET bread and butter. You're not writing an essay. You're not creating anything. You're using notes, but you've got to have that linguistic flexibility to be able to write in a formal style. And that means vocabulary. Now, a lot of people are saying, yes, I've got different numbers on the scale. I've got some people saying it's pretty easy. Good on you if you're at that level. Some people saying five, six, right? Even a nine there. It takes time. Just remember, you're on a journey, right? And we're all at different parts of that journey. We've got the same goal, passing OET. So your job is to be like, Yashu says only a three or Valeri. Just build that skill, build that confidence, and then you'll know you're meeting the OET criteria and you'll have that confidence. But I do suggest you have a notebook, take notes, um, and build your skills, everyone. Dr. Inham says needs typical practice. Absolutely. We know the saying, practice makes perfect. The more you do it, the better you get. All right, let's look at a few more examples, everyone. So time, I'm going to bring up a few time expressions because when you think about OET and you're talking about the patient history and a timeline, right? You know, the patient's been to see you for a few months or maybe a few days in hospital, and you've got to describe their progression over time. So I'm just going to give you a few examples here. There are many more, but here are a few formal time-related expressions. Uh, so patient Mrs. X came to see me, came to the clinic twice last week. This is a bit of a hard one. Mrs. X came to the clinic twice last week. I wonder how we could say that formally, twice last week. Or Mr. Y confused sometimes. Now, sometimes that's an informal word. You don't really want to, it sounds a little bit vague if you use this word in your letter, you don't want to say, Mr. Y was confused sometimes. It does not sound formal. So how could we formalize sometimes? And then we've got advice. Exercise every day. That's fair enough. Mr. Smith, exercise every day. But if we're writing it formally, how could we express that? So have a think about those words, everyone. Came to the clinic twice last week confused sometimes, and advise exercise every day. Can you come up with any synonyms for these words um, that would capture that? Answers coming in, couple of visits, but unfortunately, Edom uh, and Khan, couple of, that's still informal. So we haven't really gone up to register there. A lot of people like a couple of, but no, I wouldn't use that. Oh, I see Dora is on to it. On two occasions. There we go. I like that one. On two occasions. Every day, regularly, says Yashu. That's good. Two times a week. Possible Pratap, but a little bit wordy, but possible. Let's see what else we've got. Yeah, sometimes it's saying, oh. On a daily basis. Well done, Dora. A few people with good vocabulary range. And that's what we're building. So let's have a look here, everyone. So I've got two separate occasions. Mrs. X presented at the clinic on two separate occasions. You know, I could probably add there. It's not on this thing, but I could add if I wanted to on two separate occasions last week just formalizes that approach there everyone and confuse sometimes a few people got this one well done at times mr y reported that he experiences confusion at times now that's very formal he experiences confusion so we've gone from the verb confuse to the noun confusion much more formal. Uh, we could use on occasion, reported that he was confused on occasion. That's also a possibility. But at times is a good one. So next time you go to write sometimes, pause, think, is there a formal way? Aha, 
I can use at times, there it is. Every day, a couple of people got this one as well. <laughs> Kathy writes, exercise religiously. Well, that's good, but that's a bit emphatic. So it doesn't quite sound objective. We can just simply go on a daily basis. And imagine we're giving advice to a patient. It is important that you exercise on a daily basis. So for you guys, it's important that you study and build your vocabulary on a regular basis as well. So make note of these expressions if they're new for you. And when you're studying, you might be wondering, where can I get all this information? Where is this language? Well, I can tell you it's everywhere. Have a look at all the OET Centre model letters and start analysing the language used. And when you see an expression that you like, you borrow that, put it in your notebook, and then have a go at using that yourself. And as your confidence grows, you can start using your favourite expressions in your own writing and your formality will go up. Now, there's one more thing I'm going to explain to everyone today. So that's the time. Um, now, we can reverse it, right? We can do something called denominalization, right? Sometimes the case notes have a lot of nouns. They have a lot of big words in the case notes. But you may decide to denominalize it. In other words, to turn the noun into the verb or adjective. So the reverse is possible. Um, and that can be quite good because, you know, you you don't want to sound, you know, too robotic. Sometimes you want to add your voice. You know, you're a health professional. You have concerns about your patient, right? So you might want to add your voice and say what you did, right? Because you're concerned. Um, you might want to talk about what the patient actually said. Um, and that helps to bring the case notes to life and make it real. Because do remember that you are writing about real people, right? That's not just a textbook case. So we've got these examples, everyone. Gluten-free diet until resolution of symptoms. Well, you might go, wow, resolution, right? Resolution is a noun. What's the verb, everyone? Can you think of it? What's the verb? It's a hard one. Uh, biopsy results, characteristic findings of flattened intestinal villi. Is there another word we can use for findings? Uh, assessment required before commencement of therapy. Okay, assessment is a noun. What's the verb? We can turn this into a request. Commencement is a noun. What's the verb? All right, answers coming in. Oh, Jennifer, Kathy, Tim. Yes, resolution is resolve. That's it. So we can write the patient was placed on a gluten-free diet until her symptoms resolve. There it is. The patient was placed. Now, just remember, look at that collocation, everyone. We place someone on a diet. So the other thing you need to be doing is making sure that your verbs and your nouns collocate, right? The right verb for the right noun is also part of that vocabulary building. All right, what about findings? Findings are a hard one. Oh, revealed, Yashu. Straight onto it. Yes, exactly. I would use reveal indicate or reveal. So we can say the biopsy results indicated flattened intestinal villi or reveal flattened intestinal villi. So you've got options there, everyone. So we can, because quite often in the case notes, there is no noun, uh, there is no verb, and you need to add the verb because the verbs are quite deliberately removed and not necessary for meaning. But when you write a letter, you have to add them. Last one, I can see some answers coming in. Um, we've got assess. Yes, Vinci, nice work. Assessed. That's a good one. We're going to use that one definitely. 
Um, and do we have anything for well what's the what's the verb? So we've got assessment and commence. Could you please assess Mrs. Y before we commence therapy? There we go. Could you please assess Mrs. Y before we before we commence therapy? So what we've done there, everyone, we've denominalized those case notes. So it works both ways. And that's a skill I'd like um, to encourage you to develop, not only to formalize your writing, but also deformalize the ability to do it both ways um, will really enhance the professionalism of your writing. All right, getting a few nice comments in here, everyone. Sh Sharifa writes, Thank you for the excellent live class. It was important and really helpful. You passed OET. Isn't that excellent on first attempt? Thank you for those very that very kind sentiment, Sharifa. And I saw a few people wrote here that they passed after taking these sessions. My pleasure. Um, that's what we're here for, everyone. All right. Any questions from the audience? That's our session, everyone. It was short and sweet, just doing a little wrap on paraphrasing and the importance of um, a technique such as nominalization to have a formal writing style. Now, just before I wrap up, I'll let you know who we are if you want to visit us. So this is our website, everyone, OET Online. This is us. I'll just drop that in the chat there, everyone. Come and check out our website, everyone. You might be, if you're in a hurry, you, you've done your videos and that, and now you want some expert tutor guidance, um, come and check out our website. Uh, we've always got something good going on. And if you want to know who we are, well, look, we've been doing OET. Personally, I've been teaching OET for over 20 years, would you believe, everyone? It's been my pleasure to work with health professionals for a long period of time, and I love it and helping you guys succeed. And we've got an excellent team of teachers here. But if you need that support, you come along and visit our website. And what do we do, you might ask? Well, we have live lectures twice a day. And that's your language input where you're building vocabulary um, with our live and interactive lectures. We have a self-study component where you can acquire language um, with, and do skill building activities with our practice tasks, worksheets and quizzes. We've got an expert team of very experienced and dedicated, passionate teachers who can help give you feedback and ensure you're on track, and then you get exam success, right? So that's the key, everyone. Uh, if you want to send an email, um, I'll show you that in a moment. And just so you know, everyone, we work with lots of um, organisations. We work with the Capital Nurse Program. So if you're tired in the UK, well, we work with these people and we help overseas health professionals um, achieve employment there by passing OET. We also work for Health Education England. Uh, we're a premium provider with the OET Senate. We're an also an all-star. But you can check all that out on the website. And if you do want to contact us and get further information, everyone, we have a contact us page. And just come along here and drop your details in here. Select your profession, because we do all 12 professions. Put your details here and just click send, and then we'll get in touch. So that's the best way. Anyone, if you want to reach us, just drop an inquiry there. And I'll give you the um, link, everyone. And that's how you get in touch if you are ready to... Um, 
to take the big step if you've got an exam coming up. Now, whether it's in one month or in 12 months, doesn't matter. We do have courses. And of course, we design our courses to fit your budgets. All right. Well, we're done, everyone. That was great. Great to see so many people here. I hope this um, was one more piece of the puzzle uh, placed so that you can pass OET on your next attempt. Stay healthy, stay well, and we'll see you in the next session. Bye for now.